Hello, my friends, and welcome. Russia lost one more ship. Its name was Sergei Kotov. Let's watch the video from the drones. So it was filmed today from the drone cameras. Ukraine used five of the drone boats, and as you can see, many of them hit the target. Actually, all of them. The ship was attacked from behind and also to the sides. So here, for example, drone goes to the side of the ship. It was a big kaboom from the left side of the ship, but the ship continued its movement. It seems like the rotor was fine still, and the other drone hit the ship again. So we have one more big kaboom. After this one, ship completely stopped. The fourth drone went to the aft part of the ship. As you can see, it's significantly damaged and still hitting the same spot with this one. And it was a big kaboom. And finally, this last drone made it to the target too. The attack was done during the night time. Let's hear the sound effects. So definitely ship tried to get rid of the drone boats. There were almost no waves, which makes the operation of the drone boats better. So where did the drones hit the Russian ship? It happened near to the Kerch city of the eastern Crimea. In this Kerch bay, which is very close to the Kerch bridge, it is over here, Sergei Kotov was one of the newest Russian ships made. As a part of the Project 22160 patrol ship, but it's quite a big patrol ship. It was launched in January 2021, so three years old ship. It was even able to accommodate K-27 or K-226 or even K-29 helicopters because K-27 and 29 are nearly the same. As usual, we may find the Russian propaganda video from the ship. It was important for Ukraine to eliminate the ship because it was able to carry the caliber missiles, so it was used to launch them to target Ukrainian infrastructure, including civilian infrastructure. Here they show the K-27 helicopter, which is able to land on the ship. Those helicopters are used to identify the enemy submarines. They have this antenna for the purpose. Also, they may land some of the infantry on some sort of the ship or on the shore. The Russian patrol ship really looks modern, so it has some sort of the stealth shape of the fuselage, let's say. And also it carries this boat inside the aft compartment, so for sure this boat suffered a lot after the Magura attacks, Magura drone boats attacks. So it goes in and also could be used for the landing operations. So this patrol ship is really huge. As for the patrol ship, let's say. From the weaponry, they have the grenade launchers, some of the artillery and machine guns. This is the cannon. They show how it works. So it could be potentially used as the anti-drone gun. And also in this video, you may see that they have quite a big machine guns. This one is on the right side. Kind of the strange colors for the Russian ship. <laughs> In the sea it means something really different, it's not the Ukrainian flag or something like that. There are 60 crew members on board to operate the ship. From the latest information we know that 52 crew members were evacuated from the ship by the Russian rescue team, which was really fast reaching the site and saving lots of the sailors. So as it is reported for now also by Ukrainian GUR that 7 of the crew members lost their lives and 6 were wounded. They were lucky because this accident, let's say, happened very close to the shore and to the Russian facilities in the Kerch port. Also, we see that Russia is unable to find any sort of the solutions to secure their ships in the Black Sea. That's why every month they lose at least one of the ships. I thought that Magura boats are not that effective, but we see that they are really effective. By the way, the ship was already attacked by the drone boats in September. It got some of the damages, but was repaired. It was able to destroy many of the drone boats, but this time Ukraine uses Magura boats in a different way. Attacking the Russian ships mostly during the night time. Or early morning, then crew really wants to sleep. Here Russia shows that they put some of the floating devices around the Kerch bridge, which makes it quite a difficult target to be reached by Magura boats. Nevertheless, I think that Ukraine could be successful with that mission. I mean the Kerch bridge too. Russia totally has produced four of those kind of the ships and has six in order. The price of it is around 65 million dollars. Not that expensive, I would say, but Russia needs those ships in the Black Sea, and producing those takes time. The Ukrainian side claimed that the K-29 helicopter was on board of the ship by the time of attack and Russia lost it, but it's hard to confirm. On the video from the drone boats, I haven't seen that helicopter. Probably it was there and collapsed into the water after the first kaboom, but for me it's hard to prove this information. On this picture you may see the Russian vessels in the Black Sea, and many of them are already gone, so today Sergei Kotov was lost for the Russian Navy. Russia has already lost one-fourth of their ships in the Black Sea. 
And the most heavy loss is obviously the Moskva ship. But still Ukraine has many of the ships to eliminate and something tells me that Ukraine will be successful with this mission. Because there is basically no protection for the Russian ships. My friends, since we do not have the sponsor for today's video, let me tell you about my Telegram channel. Well, I created it around one and a half years ago and I published the text information, some of the images and videos about what is happening around Ukraine and not only. I also share my thoughts, my attitude and I check the comment section too, sometimes. If I want to communicate with my audience, I usually do it on Telegram. So I highly recommend you to join me out there. I'll put the link in the video description or put the QR code somewhere on the screen. There I do not advertise anything. It is just a good platform with a low censorship that I like. Also, the last night, unknown drones attacked the oil refinery facility in Belgrade Oblast. The facility was used to produce the diesel fuel for the Russian army. The last week Russia banned all of the export of the Russian gasoline and diesel. Why? Because they are in lack of those. Many of the Russian oil refinery facilities are being attacked by unknown drones. Let's go briefly for the military map update. There are no any changes in Avdivka today, which is good. So just the reduction of the gray area. It tells us that the intensity of the fights reduced gradually. And this map shows us the confirmed FPV drone strikes. You may see that the Ukrainian uses lots of the FPV drones and standard drones in the area. At the same time, Russia occasionally still uses their aviation. And this is the luckiest moment for the Russian soldier. The drone hit the windshield but didn't explode. It says Slava Ukraine on top of it. The detonator didn't work and we have this picture for the Russian vehicle. Those Russian soldiers are damn lucky. But we cannot tell the same for their mates who started a counterattack near to Novomikhailovka with a new convoy. They were so sure about their success that they sent the tanks, armored vehicles, everything as usual. Then something started to happen, they start to go back because they understood that there is the fire from the Ukrainian side. Someone was even successful, the Russian infantry just ran away. And here we go with the vehicles that are left in the area. What is this? The woods on the top? Well, actually, it might protect from the drone drops. This is the Russian MTLB. It's not the infantry vehicle, it's the towing vehicle and kind of the versatile one, but it has a very thin armor. Well, all of that was just caputed by Ukrainian army. The wood didn't help in that case. So why did this Russian assault fail? Because the first vehicle, the first tank, rolled over the mine and lost one track. Right after it, Ukraine started to use artillery. And all of the guys on the back understood that it's not their day and tried to run away, but it was too late. Well, one vehicle made it out successfully. Here we have Novomikhailovka, so Russians tried to advance from this direction, as you saw, unsuccessfully. Ukraine unfortunately has a significant loss today too. As you can see, it is the Hymers rocket artillery MLRS system that was attacked by the Russian ballistic missile. I think that it was Iskander and still Russia is able to operate their surveillance drones far behind the front lines as you can see. And Ukraine wasn't able to spot this drone operation. So definitely they identify the position of the Hymers and launch their attack. For sure it was harmless and inside there were some of the missiles. Yes, it's the heavy loss for Ukrainian rocket artillery, but at the same time it's the first loss of that kind of the system for one and a half years of full-scale war, since they were delivered to Ukrainian army. They did awesome job targeting Russian military bases, supplies and many more. So losing just a single system compared to what they've done to the Russian army, I mean the devastation is more or less acceptable, I would say. But still, yes, it's a great loss for Ukraine. It also means that those systems should be moved around constantly, they shouldn't stop at the same point for a very long time, even far behind the front lines. But Ukraine has already replied targeting three of the Russian Uragan MLRS systems. Those are the biggest Russian rocket artillery systems they have. It happened near to Kinsky Razdori, which is 31 kilometers away from the front lines. I guess that Hymas was used for this attack. Russia opened the full production of the Shahid drones, now they are able to produce them on the territory of the Russian Federation. Still, they receive some of the spare parts from Iran, but the scale is huge, as you can see, there are hundreds of those drones in the place. The International Court released the warrant for the commander of the Russian Strategic Aviation 
and also the commander of the Black Sea Russian Marine Fleet, ex-commander. Sergei Kabalash and Viktor Sokolov. They were given the orders for the Russian army to attack civilian infrastructure and civilian buildings in Ukraine, killing thousands of Ukrainians. Hopefully someday they will be prosecuted. Emmanuel Macron again, something changed in his mind, I guess he called the world leaders cowards and called them to step up in the war against Russia. He emphasized that the war came to Europe after coming to Ukraine, so it will not be possible to see it back. So now they're really looking for the opportunity to deploy the forces in Ukraine. Quite restricted amount of the forces, but nevertheless, I think that it will be done. France is just looking for some sort of the coalition, because going with this project alone is quite risky. Nevertheless, we have a great support from France, and they have nukes to counteract to the Russian side. I'm not speaking about the nuclear war that it should happen, but no, Moscow will think twice before going against France, because France has everything to deliver nukes to Kremlin. Also, many of the European countries are joining the initiative of the Czech president to purchase artillery shells for Ukraine. Just an hour ago, Macron released a new statement in English, and here we have his speech also with English subtitles, who initiated the war in Ukraine, who is threatening with the nuclear weapons. Let's be clear about what is happening in Europe. I'm not going to show you the whole speech because it's quite long, but nevertheless, he is so goal-oriented to help Ukraine creating a new coalition. Probably he really knows something from his intelligence sources. I guess that they understand that Putin will start the war in Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. It might even happen this year. And the NATO countries are performing the military exercise, for example, here in Poland. Also, there are some exercises on the north. We see more and more of that stuff happening. I guess that Macron is not sure about the perspective of the United States of America to secure its allies in Europe after Trump's speech, etc. And obviously it is the elections year in the United States with, I would say, almost equal chances for the candidates to win. It's a little bit tricky for our European allies and hopefully they are able to secure themselves. To some of the international events, Yemeni Houthis cut the internet cables which are going through the Red Sea. It is reported that 25% of the traffic passing through the Red Sea is completely cut, and those lines connect the servers in Africa, Asia, Middle East, which brought the outrages in many of the internet services, including YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and many others. Now the connection is more or less restored. But we see how Iranian proxies may influence the world trade by hitting the ships elsewhere and also the world internet by cutting the underwater cables. I guess that it is too much already and those Houthis should be punished with ground operation, I guess. Because as you can see, the airstrikes do not help. The other Iranian proxy force Hezbollah has launched the attack on Israel today from Lebanon. The Iron Dome was in operation shutting the majority of the missiles, but still it's one of the biggest rocket attacks on the North Israel. And this night or morning Israel will respond for sure. Alright, it will be my opinion, guys. Probably you will not like it, probably you will, I'm not sure, but I want to say it. The main reason why Zeluzhny was dismissed from his position as the general commander of the Ukrainian army. Well, there was a big poll created by our journalists among many of the residents from many parts of Ukraine. Who would they vote for if the elections were today? 48% for Zeluzhny, 23 for Zelensky. So it is a first round of presidential elections, and later on in second round, if there is only Zeluzhny and Zelensky, 67.5 would vote for Zeluzhny, 32.5 for Zelensky. And I believe that it is like that, really. Well, I have friends in Ukraine, and most of them do support Zeluzhny in this case as well. According to my personal opinion, it was the main reason why Zeluzhny was dismissed as a possible competitor to the present president. Well, we have what we have. My friends, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video, by doing so you help me a lot and also please check out some of the links in the video description just below if you want to support my job. You may support me on Patreon or on the sponsorship of this YouTube channel. Friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.